Quality is still an issue. This was a key message from participants of PV Magazine's roundtable Quality of Roof Mounted Systems, which was held during Intersolar in Munich. Good morning. I welcome you to our roundtable discussion on quality of roof mounted systems. Approximately 100 participants took part in the roundtable. The majority stayed right through the entire two and a half hours. Why is that? 700,000 systems in Germany are compromised in some way, according to Rainer Koldenberg from Germany's Mannheimer Insurance. That's a pretty big number. That would mean that one in two PV systems in Germany has some sort of fault. That needs clarification in PV magazines. Opinion. You say 700,000 systems are compromised. What does that actually mean? Compromise can mean different things. It can mean flaws that later result in the array actually itself being faulty. But it could also be errors that don't necessarily result in faults. An example for this type of compromised array could simply be documentation that doesn't comply to standards. Of course, there should be documentation, but if it isn't right, it doesn't really result in a faulty array. 700,000 out of 1.4 million solar arrays sounds very, very dramatic. If you take out the less serious cases, how would you quantify the number of arrays which are really defective? It would certainly still be in the range of 30 to 40 percent. And of these 30 to 40 percent, the very worst defects occur in around 5 to 10 percent of systems, some of which would even have to be switched off. Taking this into account, 5 to 10 percent of the plants have serious shortcomings. That means 1.5 to 3.5 gigawatts in Germany, a higher number than all of the new installations in 2015. There may be many reasons why a system underperforms. This is a photo from expert Norbert Dresel. It shows a module with the first signs of delamination. This is a hotspot. We made a survey. Two-thirds of the installers and EPC experts participating want improvements to occur when it comes to hotspots. In March, the severe storm Niklas hit Germany. As a result, some plants were seriously damaged. The question is, was it inevitable, or were the arrays poorly installed? The opinions on this vary. At PV Magazine, we're constantly looking for further examples of compromised equipment, and at the moment in particular for module defects. If you want to tell us about it, please visit our website, www.pvmagazine.com, and click on the black sheep feature. Is it right to think that quality depends only on price? This question came relatively quickly during the roundtable discussion. Can a larger commercial facility be professionally installed that works reliably without defects occurring, for example at around 1,000 euros per kilowatt peak, without this taking place? The estimates on this varied. PV Magazine had an expert from the Fraunhofer ISE on the spot. Fraunhofer representative demonstrated that you can check module quality with a sampling of test modules so that a very good indication about reliability is obtained. The question is, what does this testing cost and who can afford it? Is it realistic for small systems or for businesses that don't have such a large module throughput? We install PV systems from the small 3 kilowatt range up to industrial sizes of around 200 kilowatts. At the moment, we mainly install 5 to 10 kilowatt PV systems, which include storage. That was Henning Laurent from solar company KLE Energy. Gunther Haug, CEO of the wholesaler Baiwa RE, was present at the roundtable at Intersolar in Munich. Baiwa correlates its experience with manufacturer factory inspections with customer feedback and how manufacturers are organized. For example, whether they have a development department and whether they have a test laboratory and also how big that is. Gunther Haug says this allowed Baiwa to decrease the necessary level of testing significantly. Is that a satisfactory answer? What says satisfactory answer? That's the answer that reflects the market. The problem is, the procedure of Baywar is understandable because no manufacturer guarantees over several months to deliver the same product at a reasonable price. The next step is to start thinking about testing. Who should perform these time-consuming tests? Nobody is willing to pay for this, and it doesn't result in information that can be interpreted and compared easily. Therefore, we also have at the moment no other option than what Baywa suggests. 
We pick out manufacturers who we trust and who we believe can supply us with corresponding quality even over an extended period. Do customers ask you how you ensure quality? Not specifically, but of course customers ask about quality. How long will the modules last? Then we can only say that we try to select manufacturers who we trust that they can support the guarantee over 25 years, or better, that their modules can still deliver the appropriate power over 25 years. This is because many manufacturers' guarantees cannot realistically be trusted, particularly as you can see just how many manufacturers have gone bankrupt in recent years. Which manufacturer will still be around in 25 years to back up its guarantee? The experts, the experts of Baiwa RE say regardless that their approach has been very successful. They have about 3 million modules in the field. Last year, 126 came back with damage reports. That's a rate of only 0.0042%. That certainly seems like a good result. Stefan Palevsky also took part in the roundtable. He's the manager of photovoltaic solutions at DuPont. DuPont sponsored the event. PV Magazine asked him what he advises installers and EPCs so that they buy good quality and also what were his takeaways from the event. From our standpoint, I mean, to what, uh, what make a, a quality module, it takes, it, it takes at least three different things. One is the design aspects of the modules, the second is the manufacturing best practice, and the last but not the least is the bill of materials and the track record of the bill of material in the field. So if you go and you utilize materials in particular that have, been, uh, that have a long track record and a long experience in the field, successful, then you minimize basically the risk of failure. And that's according to our experience. So, so testing uh, is one thing, but looking what is happening in the field is another one. And you can leverage you know, the good things happening or at least leverage the uh, uh, historical data that already exists in the field and pick up what works well versus what doesn't work well. Um, but can a, let's say, a small installer who does small volumes with small roofs, can he do that? Has it, can he have the understanding to, 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 to evaluate this? Well, I think it's upon the industries, you know, to come up with some basic recommendations. You know, we, we promote, obviously, the, uh, the, the, the use of quality materials, at least to look back to what has been working well. Uh, so, so I think it would be good for the industry to come up with a, with a checklist, at least, uh, generic recommendations for for small installers to uh, to uh, to consider while selecting the components. What is your impression of our quality round table discussion? I felt the discussion was excellent all across the board. Uh, good people, very knowledgeable people around the around the table. What do you take home from this? Well, I take on um, uh, the energy uh, in this room, a lot of interest around, uh, around the quality. Obviously, uh, Germany is a very mature mar market, the first one, really the first large market. So it's very interesting to see and hear uh, uh, how installers uh, are responding to the quality issues. Uh, I feel a lot of interest about the subject matter, and, and they are absolutely right. So, so very educated uh, uh, industry, obviously. Uh, the theme of quality is not going to move away uh, as long as the uh, pressure on cost will stay around. So we need basically to find as an industry a good balance between uh, the cost imperatives and the quality imperatives. And one should not step on the toes on the others.